Hi class, um, it's Professor Kemper, and I apologize that this class needs to be held asynchronously. Um, I've just been battling this GI thing um, all weekend, and I don't think um, I'm going to make it tomorrow. So um, I'm going to just quickly record this lecture. I have a couple of activities that I want you all to um, complete and then hand in to me um, via email. So I will go through those and um, yeah. So let's get into explaining the cardiac concepts in ECG activities that we were gonna do in class, but we will just do it asynchronously. So our agenda um, was going to be um, a cardiac concepts crossword, which is what I will have you all um, complete and then email to me along with the ECG practice um, strips that I will post on Brightspace. So this is a slide that we'll, we would just do the crossword puzzle um, as team. And so here we go with um, the ECG part. So normal conduction of um, normal electrical conduction um, of our heart starts in the SA node, also known as the sinus node. Um, so this is located near the superior vena cava in the right atrium. Um, and normally in adults, the electrical impulse from the SA node um, occurs at a rate of about 60 to 100 times a minute. Um, and then this pulse quickly travels down to the AV node, atrioventricular node. Um, and that kind of electrical stimulation causes the atria to then contract. Um, and then that stimulation um, or electrical impulse travels to the bundle of Hiss and to the right and left bundle branches and finally to the Purkinje fibers, which are located in the ventricular muscle. Um, so the electrical stimulation is called depolarization. So when I talk about that, um, just know it's that electrical stimulation. And then when I talk about um, repolarization, that's the electrical relaxation. So when we do um, telemetry or we get um, an EKG, ECG, you'll see this grid paper. Um, so it'll have a horizontal axis, which represents time in seconds. Um, one small box is equal to 0 0.04 seconds. Um, and as you can see, there are um, one small box is in the light, lighter colored lines, and then um, the bigger, um, darker, lines on the grid paper are five small boxes or equal to 0 0.20 seconds. And then um, one second will equal five of those large boxes. Also on the grid paper, the vertical axis um, represents electrical amplitude in millivolts. Um, so one small box is equal to 0 0.1 millivolts and then two large boxes equals one millivolt. So on our normal ECG tracing, we will see um, a P wave, a QRS complex, a T wave, and sometimes a U wave. We're not gonna pay too much attention to it, but I just wanted to, you to be aware that sometimes we will see a U wave. Um, so the P wave um, represents atrial depolarization, so that um, electrical stimulation in our atria. The QRS complex 
um, represents vent ventricular depolarization and then contraction. Um, T wave is equal to ventricular repolarization. And then, like I said, the U wave, which we don't pay too much attention to, um, is the recovery of the Purkinje conduction fibers. But again, it might not even be visible. So let's go through them um, one by one. So like I said, the P wave represents atrial depolarization. Um, and that is when the electrical impulse starts in the SA node in the right atrium and it's conducted across the atria. Um, so in a normal EKG, a P wave always precedes a QRS complex. So we're gonna go over what's normal so that you can identify when something is abnormal. Um, so a normal P wave duration is 0 0.06 to 0 0.12 seconds. Um, and the amplitude is normally 0 0.05 to 0 0.25 millivolts. And then let's go over the PR interval. So the P wave um, starts until the, so the PR interval is when the P wave starts and then at the beginning of the QRS complex, as you can see in the picture. Um, and this en indicates AV conduction time, um, so that atrioventricular conduction time from the start of atrial depolarization to the start of ventricular depolarization or that QR, um, QRS complex. And normally um, this interval is 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds or three to five small boxes in adults. And sometimes we'll see it longer than um, longer in elderly people, but we really don't want to see this um, prolonged, the PR interval, because um, there's bad stuff that can happen if um, it is too prolonged, which it, um, I'm really going over the basics here. Um, and then when you get into four, five, six, you'll talk more in depth about these abnormalities. Um, so this interval can shorten with an increased heart rate and um, it can also be prolonged in a decreased heart rate rate. So the QRS complex, um, again, this indicates ventricular depolarization. Um, so that depolarization triggers contraction of the ventricles. Um, and in this step, um, we measure the QRS duration from the end of the PR interval to the end of the S wave, as you can see in the highlighted picture. Um, and normally this will be 0 0.06 to 0 0.12 seconds or one and a half to three boxes. If this is prolonged, we think about a bundle branch block um, because we call it that because this occurs in the bundle of his. Um, and then the right and left bundle branches, um, and it's really affecting the ventricles. So um, if this is prolonged, we know that that electrical impulse is taking too long through the ventricles to occur. Um, so that might um, interrupt contractility and cardiac output. So we just want to be looking at that as well. And then finally, the T wave, this indicates repolarization of the ventricles. And that's really all I wanted to say about the T wave. And then the QT interval, which you'll probably hear a lot about um, when you talk about psych meds, but the QT interval represents the time for ventricular activity. Um, this includes depolarization and repolarization, um, and it's measured from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. Normally it's nine to 11 bo like small boxes. And then the ST segment, we'll talk a little bit more about when we get to um, acute coronary syndrome and MI. Uh, this represents the early part 
of ventricular repolarization, that pause, and normally the ST segment is flat um, relative to the baseline. Um, so if it is elevated, it can indicate, again, like I said, an acute myocardial infarction or other cardiac conditions. Sometimes it can represent um, hyperkalemia, but um, we'll talk about that when we get to next week. So there are five steps, um, sometimes more depending on um, the course you're taking, but I just wanted to go over again the basics. So we'll start with step one um, in interpreting an ECG, which is when you're looking at the strip, does it look regular? Is there an equal amount of space between every QRS complex? And we can do this by um, using the march it out method, which we can take um, calipers, or you can sometimes take a ruler and um, put it up to each QRS, um, and then just measure them next to each other um, and kind of march it out. And are they equal? The other um, way to do this, and it's actually a little bit more um, accurate, is by counting the number of small boxes between the QRS complexes, um, each of them. And if they're all within one to two boxes, it will be considered regular. Step two is what is the rate? Um, so we know that a normal heart rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Um, so determining the rate, normally we would get a six second strip. Um, and we can count the number of QRS complexes in that six second strip and multiply it by 10. Um, or we can do the 1500 method, which is more accurate. It's by counting the number of small boxes between a QRS complex and then dividing it by 1500. Um, you should note that this does not work with an irregular rhythm, um, but most regular rhythms, we can get an accurate um, heart rate. Next step is, is there a P wave to every QRS complex? Um, so are there P waves? And is there a P for every QRS? Or is there a random P somewhere? Um, is there no Ps? Um, is there like a P wave QRS, P wave QRS, no P QRS? Like, so determining um, what our P to QRS ratio is. Step four is to look at the QRS complex and make sure that it's normal. So is it less than 0.21 seconds or three small boxes? And then the last step is to look at the PR interval. Um, and this needs to be less than 0 0.20 seconds or three to five small boxes. So I'm gonna let you all go ahead and practice the interpretations. Um, I think there's seven strips and at the bottom is the description of each of the strips that you should um, be able to figure out. Um, so let's practice with this one together. Um, so the first thing we need to determine is, is it regular? Um, just looking at this right now, it does look regular, um, but if I were to march it out, the QRS complexes should be equal in length to each other. And then the next thing I look at is what is the rate? So this is a six second strip. Um, so if I just go ahead and count the QRSs, there are four of them and I multiply that by 10. So the rate is 40. Um, and the next thing that we do is make sure that there is a P for every QRS complex and it looks like there is. So we know that this is a sinus rhythm because um, that P wave 
there's a Q or S and a T, so we know that the there is normal electrical conduction going on. And then the next thing that we look at is the Q or S complex. Is that normal? It does look like it is one small box and that is mm, I mean there's like one and a half boxes maybe QRS yeah so that's normal um, but looking at this strip right here it looks like it's um, sinus bradycardia um, because again, it's coming from the normal conduction system, sinus rhythm, um, but the rate is less than 60, it's 40, so we know it's bradycardia. Okay, so hopefully um, that makes sense. Obviously, it would have been easier to have me there helping you all through the um, telemetry strips and interpretation, but what I would say is do the best you can by um, interpreting them and labeling them. Um, email them to me, and if you have any questions, um, just shoot me that in your email. Um, again, I apologize that this needs to be asynchronous tomorrow. Um, I just, I am sick, so, um, but I will see you all Hopefully Wednesday, fingers crossed, um, this doesn't get worse. Um, okay, I hope you all have a good night. Take care.